like red letters over trap beats to fix it saying ooh DJ focus tell him turn you up ooh DJ focus tell him turn you up ooh Welcome back, DJ Focus, Dice Gamble. You tap back into the fix, your source of faith infused hip hop, R and B, and poetry. I know what time it is. Time for our spiritual detox. And listen, we got a, we got a, we got one for y'all today. I know we say it all the time, but uh, man, we we got people in this space, man, who's doing powerful things, man. You talk about, man, is he a producer? Is he a rapper? Oh man, he probably done wrote some of the bars from some of some of your, uh, your, your your artists you don't even know about, man. He done done it all. Listen, the super talented Rick Rogers is joining us today. What's going on, brother? Now, Chen, how y'all doing today, man? It's your boy Rick Rogers, the hit maker, man. Man, you've been doing it for a while, man. I think you've been slept on, man. I got to give you roses, man. Um, I don't think people really know like all the creds and all the work you be putting in for not only yourself but artists. And right. like, yeah, you, you've been putting it in. I've been following you, man. Forgive me. I, I should have been reached out to you, but I, I've been following the journey, man. And uh, I just want to salute you, man. Thank you for everything you've done, man, in this space, man. You have championed for CHH for a while now, bro. Well, I really appreciate that, man. For real. For sure. For sure. Come on and talk about it a little bit, man. Share a little bit of your faith journey with the people, man. Maybe how you develop your own personal relationship with Christ. I mean, um, of course, as a child, I heard about God, I heard about Jesus, but it never was like really put on me, you know what I'm saying? And then um just over the course of time, I guess like the things the world would say about Jesus, like the things you could find on the internet, things like that caused me to turn completely away, like to the point where I was believing in like all this manifestation stuff and like kind of like everything everybody else be getting into, like the law of attraction and all these different things like that. But um you know, uh, being a father, being in the music industry, uh, so many things kind of like drove me to like depression and different things like that. You know what I'm saying? And I would never, I never had a fix for anything. Like I never knew what to fix anything. But what it is, is I started traveling with my boy, um, this dude named Marcus Rogers. But before the traveling, what it was is he would asked me to hop on his music, like, be featured on his, like, Christian music, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, what I would do, being that I wasn't a believer, because me and Marcus is, like, cool for, like, years, what I would do is I would, any question I would want to really ask God, I would ask on the songs, right? So what that would allow me to do is to play the music over, because I'm wanting, so I'm listening to more positive music now. And it's just, like, you know, getting in my mind and becoming a part of my life and everything like that. So when I actually started traveling with him, I started meeting, like, more Christians and stuff like that. I just started seeing a difference in people because I'm used to traveling with, like, secular artists, like, going to their tours and doing these things. And it's, like, one of the main things I noticed is when I'm with secular artists, we always need guns, drugs, and women, like, all the time. That's, like, as soon as you get to the Airbnb, hey, call to get this. We need that. Make sure we got a strap. Make sure we got this. And then, But when I start traveling with him, it's, like, because I'm the same broken person in each space. But these people was like, you good? Can I pray for you? Like, So it was just kind of weird to see people that look like me smiling. You know what I'm saying? Where we come from, it's, you don't get that. You can barely say what's up, where we come from. So I just started asking more and more questions over and over. And um, bro, Marcus would never, he would never, like, try to push nothing. I mean, he just, for one, he would answer any question I had. And then for two, he would always say, um, he would always say, I don't know how you're not famous yet, but I feel like God is holding you for himself. So that would be the extent of it. And then um, I remember just one day I was going to Chicago because he flies out a lot to come record the music and, you know, be a part of the church and everything like that. I was just remember being on the plane one time and um, I just had the thought like, dang, if this plane go down, I'm probably going to go to hell. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Because it's like I'm starting to feel it like God's kind of start working on my heart a little bit. So I'm like, if the plane go down, I'm going to hell. So. I made a decision on the plane that day to actually get baptized, you know what I'm saying? And once I landed, I told bro, got baptized, and this has kind of been a wrap ever since, for real. Listen, I love I love you uh, sharing that story. And shouts out to Pastor Marcus Rogers, man. We, we know he's been doing powerful things for the kingdom. Just talk a little bit more about uh, uh, him just being himself. Like, I, I heard it very clearly. Like, he didn't push his faith off on you. He didn't constantly judge you for whatever you may have been doing. If he even saw anything, 
I, I think that's important for the listeners to know that he was building the relationship with you and allowing for room for God to be God. Because I, I, I would argue you going around him and being around him doing music and just seeing how he moved, that kind of inspired you to a certain extent, didn't it? Yeah, he he never he never was like, bro, you like you should become, you should this, you should that. He never did that. Like, and I'm being real transparent. Like, this was like I would be fresh from outside smoking a blunt, coming back into the studio, like working with him. You know what I'm saying? Because his thing was like I've been working with bro before he fully committed to making Christian music. So when I met him, it was secular Christian, secular Christian. But I wasn't hands on at the time. My partner was. So we had a relationship then, but I say like six, seven years down the line, he called me to mix some music for him one time. I think he booked a session. And after we did that session, it's just been a rap ever since, you know what I'm saying? And um he just uh, he reminded me of myself so much. He's so he's so like misunderstood, I would say. Like gentle. He's a nice, kind person, like probably the most kindest person I know in my life personally, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, bro, just never pushed it on me, man. It was just Rick, you trying to come to LA? Yep. Rick, you trying to come here? Yep. Rick, can you come to Chicago to record? Yep. You know what I'm saying? And it's just being around it. I'm asking questions. I'm meeting more people that's believing the same thing. And it's like, I guess it's just like seeing joy on people is just uncommon. So it's like it got to a point where it's like I want that. I met this dude named Live. I don't know if you know Live SP, but Live is like the biggest smile I ever seen on on a gangster dude. Is like he used to be, you know what I'm saying? And I was just like, right. I used to go, I used to go home, like, bro, I really want, I want that because I was depressed for like ten years. Like it's like I always had this life because where I'm from, I'm famous. Like where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? And right. it's like I could never get the help I really wanted because everybody see what I did in the music and they put me like up here in this space. So it was like even when I needed help on the grind, I couldn't get it because everybody thought I was this. So it was like it looked one way, but it's really not that in my real life. So it was like for a long time I was like wanted to kill myself, like for real. <laughs> wow. I can laugh at it, but I looking back at it now, it's like for a long time. And nobody would ever know. And I think people people used to make up lies about me getting signed and stuff. So I could never get any help, no push, no nothing. I just be going hard by myself for a real long time. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, man. You know, what do you do for your mental health right now, man? Because you, you said a lot, man, and going through those depressed states and even, like you say, uh, thinking about suicidal thoughts. Have you went to any form of therapy or any type of counseling to kind of help you deal with some of those emotions? Or I mean, since I got baptized, right, and since I choose to believe the word of God, it's like I don't even have it no more. I mean, and I'm I'm fairly new to this space, so don't get me wrong. Like, praise God. I don't know if I've been delivered from it or whatever you call it, but I literally, when I see myself, I choose to try to see myself how God sees me. And it's like, if I'm here to love others, it's like, for one, I don't, I'm not here to even need it if I can get it from Him. So I literally haven't thought about it. I don't want to think about it. And it's like, it's it's almost like my whole life I felt like I was living in the wrong place because I always looked at I'm like, why is everything that's wrong right and everything that's right wrong? But when you come across the Bible, it lays it all out for you. So now it's just like, I know who I am. I know what I'm here for. So it's almost like anything anybody says is just unaffected. You know what I'm saying? Everything I hated about me, God loves about me. He just wants me to change things. You get what I'm saying? And that's a comfortable space to be in. Yeah, that's good. Listen, DJ Focus, we got to go to a quick break. We're coming back with more from Rick Rogers. Keep it locked. You're tuned to The Fix. You know The Fix is in. Holy Culture Radio. We're not just background noise. We play the music that inspires you because every song has a story. Christian hip-hop and R&P music and talk on Sirius XM Channel 154, 24 hours a day. Holy Culture Radio is changing the game. Discussions about faith, arts, vocation, and education. We talk about the real issues that affect our communities and work together to find solutions. Join the discussion at holyculture.net and be heard. Welcome back. You tap back into the fix. Your source of faith-infused hip-hop, R&B, and poetry. Still got Rick Rogers on, kicking it with us. So come on, man. Um, you've been around, man. You've done it, uh, you know, on the mainstream side as well as the the faith-based side. We celebrating 50 years of hip-hop this year. Um, where do you think the state of in the the state of the culture of hip-hop is right now? 50 years. Where do you see it at? 
I mean, it's an odd time to ask the question considering D1 has it jumping with the conversation he started, but he's 100% right. And it's like, we all, I mean, if you come from the second side, we was a part of it. So there's no way you could be on this side and not see it for what it is. I think it's, I just think it's in a bad space, man. I think people are blind. And I say that as a person who once was. Like, we think the stuff we saying is hip, cool, it's going to get us some money. But the stuff we saying really penetrate people's minds, for real. Like, it's like these little kids really want to be what they hear. You know what I'm saying? I got to witness that firsthand with my own son. Because me growing up, I didn't know. I'm just rapping regulator, just doing my thing. But when I watched my son, I noticed the music he listened to and the people he would follow online is the people he would try to be like, you know what I'm saying? So it's the stuff he was hearing started happening like in real life, you know what I'm saying? So hip hop, we need to reclaim it. Like we need to do something. We need to do something for real, for real, because it's bad. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's why we do what we do in our space. So let me ask you, um, I know you wasn't, you were never signed to a, a label, but do you think uh, it, it needs to start with the record execs and the labels label owners first before it starts with the artist because to your point i think it's i I'm, I'm not i'm not letting nobody off the hook that's not what i'm saying all i've said is when you trying to do it for a living and you're trying to make money off of it and you see that this is what they constantly want to push it's kind of like that thing like what do you choose to do like do you choose to not be a part of it and not use the gift or do you be a part of it and then to D1 point, uh, D1's uh, uh, point, do you evolve and come out of that and do similar like maybe like, a you know, Jay-Z did with the 444, even though I think it was a little late, but at least he still did it. Do you still educate at the end once you finally secure businesses and money to where you can kind of move on your own? What's your thoughts on that? Um, I look at it. I, I look at it. It can be penetrated from different angles. For one, I don't think it's a one for sure way to get in and make the change. Now, when I think about the people that's in control, they can't sell it if ain't nobody consuming it. So we don't. Now you got oh. two different people to look at. You know what I'm saying? I always right. looked at it that way. Like if we just woke up today and like, nah, we ain't supporting that anymore. They're gonna naturally change what they want to do. So it's like. If, if McDonald's could sell a Big Mac for 10 years, why are we going to stop selling it? You know what I'm saying? So I do understand it from a business point of view. But then, like I said, I think it's a big difference. And um, I, I do think it's a big difference. In, cause I could I could rap influential without mentioning God. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's when you have that conversation about God, it's, it's really a heart check at that point. Like, your heart got to be right. In your mind, you could just be influential. Yeah, but... Is your heart for God hurt enough when you lie to somebody? Do you feel bad when you lie? Do you feel bad when you put such a wife? Like, different things like that. So I just think if we're going to attack it from a music point of view, it got to be the content in the music. It can't just be influential. It got to be transforming. You know what I'm saying? That's why I think God comes into play in the whole situation. No, that's real. And and, and we know it's a spiritual battle. So that that's yeah. real. Why do you think we uh, – yeah, I, I'm gonna say we because we we are part of it too as well. Our right, culture. Yeah. Why we? Why do you think we continue to consume this music that we know is hurting our spirit, man, as well as our kids and our youth? That it, it's really having an impact on them. Why do you think we continue to support it and buy it and and be at these concerts? I, I'm 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 being I'm being honest with you. Like a lot of these concerts, they ain't just youth at these concerts. You got you know adults that's yeah. at these concerts too as well. So why do we continue to support this music then? I think, I mean, I think it's part of a deeper, I think it's really part of a curse for one, because I just look at my life growing up. I spent, all right, it's because it's like the devil did a really good job in tricking us. Like, we don't know that we are love, so we don't know to be love. So we spend our whole life looking for love in which none of us never find it. Like, not the love that we are, that we want anyway. So no matter where you go, you're not going to be satisfied. So it's more so... It's more so everybody learns how to be selfish. Like, the world teaches you literally how to be selfish. Like, you care for people, but you don't truly love people, right? So everybody's selfish. So it's like, shoot, if I'm making $10 million off of this, yeah, I know everybody knows what they say in their music. They know it's not beneficial. They know the six-year-old or the nine-year-old kid running around talking about getting in all of that. You know what I'm saying? That's not right. Everybody know that. So, but the thing is, I'm feeding my family with this, so it don't really matter. Like, the world kind of teaches everybody how to be selfish. And then 
you take a group of people who don't really have nothing, and we have like four major ways that's highlighted for success, which is basketball, football, rap. And it's like, we all gonna, he made it out from where I'm from doing that, so that's what I'm about to do. He made it out from selling drugs, that's what I'm about to do. He made it out rapping, that's what I'm about to do. He made it out rapping about this. The dude that's rapping the popular stuff I ain't making it out. I ain't doing that, I'm gonna do this. And I think it's a good mix of people that's really doing it. Then it's a good mix of people that's not truly living that life. But I always look at it like this, not leave it at this. For every rapper that make ten million, he's gonna influence at least two hundred thousand to really go out here in these streets and kill people and kill people. And then out of that two hundred thousand, maybe five of them might be the ones that make the millions. So the ratio just doesn't add up at all. There's more that's people dying than people that's making music, millions from the stuff that we're doing. That's good, man. Come on, man. I gotta talk about all this music before I get you out of here, man. First, man, come on. Talk about your production creds and. What you done done, man, over the years, man, for the people who don't know, man. Like, you've been in some spaces that are major. So just shout out some of your production creds, who you work with, who you done produce for, before we talk about your music. Um, all right, I'm going to be honest, because I'm, I don't, I mean, I, it depends on what you call production. I started out to beat, making beats as production, but any room on, man, I'm overseeing the project, you know what I'm saying? So if we're going to look at production from that way, but I don't work with some of everybody, um, I've been in spaces with Timberland. I've been in spaces with people like Puppy. I've been in spaces with people like Arsenal, the Rebel. Um, I've been in spaces where I'm writing songs for Chris Brown, submitting songs for Kendrick Lamar. Um, just plenty of different spaces for real, for real. Uh, I never really actually, I had one placement in the music industry out of the whole time I've been dealing with it. But I've always been the person that's, that's, in the situation, but the situation never becomes mine. It's always like somebody I'm writing for locally that end up getting to deal with maybe that music group, but I'm still that person that's writing the music, engineering the music and stuff like that. Then I have a situation where someone that I'm writing with, doing this with, they go into a situation and get the actual writing deal and I'm still just like the person. So. That it only makes me think back to Marcus saying God is holding you for himself. But I've always been in the mix like for like 10 years. I'm always in the mix. I'm always in the room. But it's always the person I'm with that's getting written for by me and stuff that gets the actual opportunity. And that's just been a story of my life. It's even happening again right now with my son. But it's, I'm blessed that it's happening with my son right now. Yeah, that's good. Talk about that, man, being able to work with your son, man, and teach him music. Oh, man, Brick been since three years old. He, I knew he had it already. Like, he would mm. get on the microphone and sing melodies that he's not supposed to sing. Like, and it's it just, man, um, I could have pushed him. I wanted to, I really, even now, I'm not really ready to push him how I want, but the world or the internet is is making me have to do it. I, I honestly wanted my son to learn how to be self-sufficient in what he's doing. So if I, if, you know, if I pass today, he can still do what it is that he want to do. So I was kind of waiting for him to start recording himself, start doing this, doing that. But I'm always going to include my son on my album. So that's what's going on right now. And the song that he's on right now is the one that everybody is liking a whole lot. Yeah, right that there. thing fire. We're carrying the light on it. Yeah, that, that, that thing yeah. fire. Come on, come on. Talk about it, man. Your, your new music, man. What you working on and what you got coming up? Um... During the month of October was a beautiful month, actually. Um, September, in September, I dropped my own solo project. You can still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. In September, I dropped my own solo project, which is called Ricky Miyagi for Christ. Um, the Miyagi, of course, is from the Karate Kid. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I call myself that because I've all anything I do, I kind of master it, like videos, graphic designs writing all that stuff so it's kind of like a like a spin off of that and i had three projects before rick and miyagi one two and three which were in the secular realm so i wanted to end the series with a bang which would be rick and miyagi for christ because that's when i gave my life to god so that's september then in october marcus rogers dropped the album called soul and which i um engineered the whole thing and um he always asked me to get on songs, so I'm on like 12 songs on that album. And then, <laughs> Carrying the Light, of course, one of the people I actually look up to, he's one of the people that I never, I thought I would have to break a leg to actually get to work with him, you know what I'm saying? But 
it just happened. Like we did one song, we had two songs. I sent him another one. He said, "Man, you might as well do an EP." And I'm like, oh. you know what I'm saying? Cause that's something that, that's something I wanted to do, but I'm kind of I'd be kind of scared to ask because like you know, bro, put in work. I don't want to just pop up on the scene and ask. But he was okay with it, and that's just where we at. And I'm I'm dropping another project in December. And the only reason I'm dropping so much music because as a secular artist, I held on to everything. So right now, I feel like I got two thousand songs that I can't really use. So as a Christian artist, I don't want to look back next year and have 500 songs in the catalog. I'm just going to let everything fly. Wow. So 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 what's what's your plans for next year, man? You touring next year, man? Um, I have King Legend as my manager and um like I said, the way I try to live life now is like whatever God want to do, he want to do. Like I am thinking uh cuz I've been millions of streaming stuff with Marcus, you know what I'm saying, but that don't translate to followers for me. So our whole goal is to try to, what we call, shoot a flare in the air so everybody can see, like, oh, that's the dude that was on this for all these years. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that was our plan. But God right. is like, uh-uh, we're going to use Lil Rick. So it's kind of hard for me to try to set plans because he always, like, anytime I have been setting plans but since I've been baptized, God just do it a whole nother way. So I'm just... I'm literally trying to get out of the way at this point and just let him do whatever he, he want to do. Listen, Rick, we appreciate you rocking with us, man. Tell the people how they connect with you, follow you on all your social media platforms, as well as introduce your latest single. All right. Um, Rick Rogers, the hit maker. You can find me on Facebook at Rick Big Culture Rogers. And on Instagram, you can find me at Rick Rogers Worldwide. And that's R-O-G-E-R-S. You won't find it with a D. And the single by default is the song called All I Need, featuring Karen the Light and my son. We just put the clip out, and the clip has been constantly growing all day long since been 10 days now. I don't even know how viral work, but it's just going up at its own pace, and everybody loved it, man. I don't know what to say. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's a certified banger. Keep it locked. You're tuned into The Fix. You know The Fix is in.